So yeah, as, um, as Nico said, my name is Lewis. Uh, I'm 21 years old. I've just graduated uh, from university uh, in Manchester. Um, I've unfortunately just been told my graduation is going to be online, um, which is a bit of a shame. Although it probably affected my mum a little bit more than it affected me. All those missed photo opportunities um, is just an absolute killer. Um, but next year, I'm doing an internship um, with a company called Christians in Sport. Um, so hopefully being able to be trained up to do more things like this, more mission stuff. Um, so I'm really looking forward to doing that. Um, I'm really looking forward to today as well. Uh, so Nico messaged me on WhatsApp uh, a few weeks ago and he said, oh, Lewis, is it okay if you preach? And I said, yeah, absolutely, I'd love to. Uh, what do you want me to preach on? Uh, and he goes, oh, you know, just spiritual maturity. Uh, you know, I was, isn't that what you should be doing <laughs> at that point? Um, you know, but no, I'm, I'm really excited to share um, about what we've got today. And we've got a great passage uh, as well. So if you've got your Bibles, do you want to go ahead and, and open them up? If not, that's not a problem. Uh, I'm going to read it for us today. The passage is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. It's kind of annoying. We don't have the Bible, church Bibles anymore. Someone can't just shout out a page number and everyone's there. Everyone's got a scramble. Um, give me a thumbs up if you're there. Give me a thumbs up. Cool. All right. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. And it reads, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, as each part does its work. So to give you a bit of context, the book of Ephesians is kind of split into two parts. The first part uh, is chapters 1 to 3, and in that sort of section, Paul kind of outlines the gospel. What is the gospel? What does Jesus' death and resurrection mean for us? And in the second part of the book of Ephesians, which is what we're starting to look into today, Paul starts to talk about how we should respond to the gospel. How should that affect our lives? How does Jesus' death and resurrection affect how we live today? And that's kind of the question I want to think about today is, how does the story of the gospel affect your lives? And, you know, I'm not just talking about, you know, I believe in Jesus, you know, I'm a Christian, but how does the physical act of Jesus dying on the cross, the ultimate act of love, how does that influence our everyday actions? And if we look at the passage, you know, in verse 11, Paul talks about different roles. Jesus has placed people in the church from pastors, apostles, and teachers. And then verse 12, uh, he talks about how we're being equipped for different works of service. But it's all pointing to this idea, to this goal of spiritual maturity, which is talked about in verse 13. And verse 13 holds the key to how we can experience this spiritual maturity. And it reads, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of of the Son of God and become mature. In other words, it's saying that if we want to mature in our faith, then we need to grow in knowledge and understanding of who Jesus Christ is, what he's done for us, who we are to him. That is how we can mature in our faith. A couple of years ago, um, I had a bit of a, a sort of a transformation in my faith. Um, I began attending, universe, began attending church uh, in university, a church called City Church. Um, and it was a really great church. And you know, I went there, um, but, you know, believing in the gospel, believing that Jesus died for me, that was never really an obstacle in my faith. So I quite quickly kind of glossed over that part and began thinking, how, how do I mature? You know, I'm taking this seriously now. How do I show God that I'm serious about this whole Christian thing? Um, so pretty quickly I started kind of looking at other people in the church, people that I thought were more mature than me. And I began observing them, probably a little bit too closely, but just seeing what it was they were doing. How is it that they are so mature? 
And basically, I kind of just replicated what they were doing into my own life. So I began making quite big changes. You know, things like attending a Bible study on a Wednesday, maybe cutting out as much drinking from my life, uh, maybe doing little things like that. Um, But even though, you know, maybe these things would have been beneficial, I wasn't necessarily maturing in my faith. I wasn't actually growing in love and knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, I was basically just saying, look at me, God. You know, I used to be out maybe drinking on a Wednesday or doing this on a Wednesday, and now I'm at a Bible study. Surely now that means that I am mature. Surely I'm maturing in my faith now. But actually, I was trying to prove myself before God to justify my own spiritual maturity by my own works. I glossed over the most important part of the Christian faith, which is the death and resurrection of Jesus. The death and resurrection of Jesus that needed to happen because it shows that it is by nothing we could ever do that we can grow closer to God, but by everything Jesus did on that cross. But I think it's, it's quite a normal thing for us to do as Christians, isn't it? You know, we hear the gospel, we hear it a lot, and then we believe the gospel, and then maybe quite quickly we move on from the gospel. You know, yeah, I understand that, and Jesus died for me, you know, I understand that. But how do I mature? How do I grow? It's almost like we're trying to move on to the next level of the Christian faith. But when we have this mindset, when we try and move on from the gospel, that's kind of us moving from spiritual dependence to spiritual independence. Moving from dependence on Jesus and his death on the cross to ourselves and our own ability to determine how we can grow aside from God. But Paul is saying, guys, stay in Jesus. Grow in understanding. Grow in knowledge of him, of what he's done for you. This is how you will grow. I've been playing tennis uh, with my sister this week. um, And you know when our games haven't been ruined by the rain um, or the wind, uh, or by how competitive she is, uh, <laughs> it's, been, it's been good fun. And we've been trying to sort of give each other pointers, because um, neither of us have played tennis in quite a long time, so that's been quite enjoyable. Um, and one sort of tip that we keep kind of sharing with each other, one really core part of the tennis game is you've got to get your racket back and get your racket back early. You know, and we were sort of talking about getting our racket back, it, it sort of made me remember all the times of all the tennis lessons I've ever had in my life. And I remember whatever coach it was, whatever point this was in my career, how good I was, whatever it was, the coach would always scream, Lewis, get your racket back. And then I would sort of forget to get my racket back. And then he'd say, Lewis, get your racket back, do a lap of the pitch. And then I'd sort of do a lap, whatever it was. But that was the key. I had to get my racket back. And you know what? It doesn't matter how good you are at tennis. It doesn't matter if you're Rafael Nadal. It doesn't matter how much you've perfected a spin shot, how big your bicep is, and how hard you can hit the ball. If you don't get your racket back in tennis, you cannot improve as a tennis player. We can never move on from that fundamental part of the tennis game. And in the same way for us to mature in our faith, we can never move on from the gospel. We can never move on from Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross. It doesn't matter how many years we've known him for, we always need to go back to the cross because that's where we are saved. That's where we can feel Jesus' love. That's where our confidence comes from. Depend on the love that he showed for you on that cross. But the idea of depending on something, the idea of dependence can seem quite strange for us. You know, we live in a world that tells you if you want to mature in life, then independence is the key. You know, when you're a kid and you get to set your own bedtime, then you're independent and then you're mature. Or maybe you're a late teen and you can start driving and hit the roads, then you're independent and then you're mature. Um, Or maybe it's about going to university and being away from your parents, then you're independent and then you're mature. And then a job providing for yourself and your family, then you're independent and then you're mature. Life tells you that if you're independent, then that's how you mature. But the key to spiritual maturity is dependence on Jesus. He died so that we don't need to be independent anymore. He died to take that pressure off of us and put it on himself. Depend on Jesus and what he did on that cross for you. Verse 16 is a picture of of just how dependent we are on Jesus. And it reads, From the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love. 
Every single supporting ligament is held together by Jesus' love for us. But do we feel this love? Do we live in joy of how much the God of the universe actually treasures us? A lot of the time I don't feel it. I forget about it. It doesn't really cross my mind. In fact, sometimes I choose not to think about it. But imagine for a second, imagine a child who's entered this world, a young child, and they just have absolutely no idea that they're loved. They know no other way than to fight for themselves. What confidence do they have to grow into the world? How can they mature? It breaks our hearts to think about situations like this. But it breaks God's heart to think about us not knowing that we're loved by him. He took the form of a human, came and lived a sinless life, an innocent life, and was killed for it. Just so he could be in a relationship with you. That is the love that we are talking about. Depend on your understanding of this act of love. Turn back to it every single day, whether it's reading the Gospels over and over, whether it's sharing the Gospel with your friend, whether it's praying and asking God to fill you with his love, whether it is just saying thank you for the cross. Turn back to the love God has for you. Because as these truths sink deeper and deeper into our hearts and minds, that is what forms us into the image of Jesus. And that is how we mature in our faith. I'd just like Mirk, to invite Mirku and the band to come back up. But as the, as the band come back up and they start playing, I just, I'd love for us to just take an opportunity to, to turn to God in prayer. To really turn to God and say, God, I can never understand the fullness of the love you showed for me on that cross. But help me to. Help me to mature in this love. Whatever it is that could be in the next week, or days following, just ask God to teach you how can you just experience this love more? How can you mature in this love? This love is regardless of whatever's going on.